Hello and welcome to 3.0 TV. This is Manoj Dara. So talk, we have, we have invited a special guest who will talk on the DeFi space. Let me introduce you to Mr. Karan Ambani. Sir, welcome on 3.0 TV. So, thank you. Thank you, Manoj. So, so since uh, you are the lead of DYDX and the foundation itself, and you have taken a broader initiative to educate the entire community. So what are, what are the steps you have taken? Uh, what, what is the road ahead? If you can just clarify this for us. Yeah, I can maybe start from giving some background. So how we have seen decentralized finance space evolving is, of course, it started the entire blockchain started with this application of finance. So from Bitcoin to Ethereum, everything has like this financial layer underneath. Uh, when it comes to DeFi, what we observed, especially in India, is the education is missing. So a lot of people are using centralized services, which are not trustworthy, understanding that the regulations are not there. And also there is not proper scrutiny of how different services are using uh, um, in the back end, right? So uh, what we have, the path that we are of course taking for DYDX Foundation is to educate the people to understand how this new financial system is being designed and how they can start participating and contributing in various different ways. Fantastic. A few keywords uh, I have picked is the education and the community building is more important for you. So what are the steps you are taking to, to build this community? And uh, uh, in, this, in this journey, where have you reached? We actually just started the journey and especially like focusing on India because we understand there's a huge potential. India being one of the biggest countries when, you, when it comes to uh, the digital asset holders overall and also the, the overall youth is very technically savvy. They have built a lot of products which are being uh, run globally. So we, what we understand for India is that there is a huge potential to build this strong community who can start contributing on building the next generation protocols, especially like also contributing to uh, the new versions of what we are launching at DYDX, but also um, also like participating in various other ways, like part, because we are designing this new internet, right, where it's going to be user owned or community owned, they can participate in how different mechanisms are being built, how they would like to like delegate power to different users, um, even the revenues and different things that are being currently um, run in a very centralized way in the web two. The web three is trying to uh, solve that with a strong community. So when it comes to our own journey, we of course have just like put our foot down and we are like just trying to expand in the um, market and for which we are interacting with the active users, the active traders who understand uh, the nitty gritties of the technology and we are uplifting with different education initiatives like for example there's something called DYDX Academy which talks more about you can go and check out um, online which is about like how to start get start trading in crypto, how to um, start getting more involved in DeFi in itself. So um, through this this angle of education as well as building a strong community around our product, that's how we are like expanding. You just mentioned about a couple of things, a couple of initiatives which you have taken. Can you just mention what kind of projects you are working on? Yeah, so um, we want to develop like these key people who would be having a good understanding and who would be like leading leading the way forward. Sure. So like a program which is around ambassadors or who are like the key leaders who understand the technology and they have the enthusiasm to actually bring it forward to their community to educate people so that uh, more and more people utilize the benefits without uh, without being exposed to too much of the risk that is of course um, also there when it comes to um, decentralized protocols it's a wonderful initiative of education and community building as well but we will uh, but we will talk about the cryptocurrency overall cryptocurrency market we will talk about the defi space in a bit but uh, what is your opinion about the current situation in the cryptocurrency market and uh, what is what is what is the road ahead for investors if you can just uh, for all those viewers who are watching this interaction what is your advice to them sure so i can maybe tell you a bit from my experience of course it's a big market i have been in this space for maybe like five six years now i have seen like multiple cycles of uh, the market going up market coming down uh, whether that's driven by my macro factors or that's driven by specific regulations in a country or whether that's just like loss of interest from different users right so right now we are way ahead from where we were in back in 2017 2018 when a lot of people got initially into crypto now there are multiple different segments. DeFi is just of course one area which has gained the most traction or which is the most solid foundation I would say. But of course then there are NFTs which a lot of celebrities, a lot of people have started like engaging with these um, online 
avatars you can say essentially right they want to like give a reputation to uh, to their online presence right. and um, also then there are like of course different segments like metaverse and other things that are evolving in crypto so web3 has become a major ecosystem now it's not just limited to a particular sector and i can't say that okay the market is not performing well that does not define so the, are you saying that the next phase of growth is going to come from the web3 arena or you have a different idea about it? so um, there is a continuous development happening in the Web3 arena. There are multiple different products coming up. Every day we interact with many different people who want to get started in Web3, whether that's like finding jobs or like getting more educated in the space, right? So uh, the space is continuously building, evolving, even for, for example, DYDX has been uh, building last five years. This is, we are actually launching our new version end of this year, which is going to be a DeFi, DYDX chain, which is completely going to be built on Cosmos. So this is our fourth version. We started on Ethereum, built on a layer two technology stock. So the builders are continuously building, things are evolving, even the markets go up and down. Of course, there, like last couple of months, we saw some uh, downtrend in the market that was also led by multiple different factors that happened globally other markets like stock real estate also uh, saw, took some hit so there are those factors and also within within um, crypto ecosystem also we saw some bad actors or some um, systematic issues that led to that uh, how the market is performing right now but that is not how we, I define the space entirely so you spoke about bad actors let us talk about one bad actor which has destroyed the entire crypto ecosystem that is Terra Luna and uh, post which we have seen, I mean, since you catered to that segment, it's the DeFi space. And we have seen a major disruption coming post the Terra Luna. We have seen Celsius and we have seen a chain reaction, which is uh, which which has actually impacted the cryptocurrency market as well as the investors. So what is your view as far as the entire DeFi space? And uh, what is uh, the initiative which your 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 foundation or for that matter, uh, your company is taking to educate investors uh, in this segment? Sure. So, I think what we need to first of all understand is this is a very new space that we are working in. The technology itself is very new. There is continuous iterations that are happening to improve the technology. Uh, the financial models are very innovative and very new in a way. So it's very hard, like there's no guidebook available how to build in DeFi or how to like grow a particular ecosystem, right? So when it comes to, I won't like name na any names, but even the bad actors, they were, or, or most of the protocols that or even like centralized companies that you mentioned about uh, went down, they were having some um, systemic issues, whether they were not managing their risk properly or their model itself, financial model was not working. So as, as it happens in DeFi, the products are exposed to the retail audience at the get go. So they get to invest, they get to participate, they get to start interacting. But then there are like hidden security flaws or whether they are like entire design is not entirely correct or flawed in a way, right? So it's uh, very hard for a retail investor or the market overall, even for experienced players. We saw some experienced players also like going through liquidations and uh, not, a not able to like manage their risk properly, right? It's very difficult and it's very, uh, I would say it's unfair to kind of point fingers at anyone. Of course, there are some bad actors which we can say that uh, should have mitigated some of the risks that we have seen. Um, but all this chain of events have kind of led us to a more mature ecosystem. Within the last month or two itself, we have seen the market crashing and coming back again. Like it's kind of like Phoenix rising up from the ashes, right? We actually saw the drop and everything in crypto happens very fast as compared to traditional finance. Exactly. What would happen in 10 years in the stock market happens in like three months in three crypto, months, right? Yeah. So I would say the ecosystem is becoming more and more stronger and we have learned from our mistakes. Um, we have learned that centralization or lack of transparency led, leads to some issues and the user base would be more aware and as you mentioned like uh, for DYDX of course our focus is to bring more education and uh, make the audience aware how to participate in a more secure manner. So you spoke about transparency. There was a lot of transparency between two exchanges. I'm talking about the Binance Wazir X Pact. In 2019 it started with a lot of transparency and here we are in 2022 they are saying that they don't know each other. There is something happening which is not good for the consumers and there are roughly around 15 million customers that are impacted by this. So what is what is the thought process? What is your opinion on the entire episode? If you can just brief us that. I think the sarcasm in your voice when you mentioned about transparency uh, answers the question itself because most of the ecosystem was aware that these parties were interacting very closely with each other. But 
as you can understand, there are multiple different geographies that they operate in. There are multiple different like uh, legal structures that they follow. And as a retail user, as even like an institutional user, it's hard to, hard to understand what is happening in the back end. Um, so that's why like we are huge proponents of decentralized technology. Whatever is available on chain, the code is available out there. There could be some security vulnerabilities, but still like as a user, you can see what is happening, right? So there needs to be overall more transparency. And when the uh, weather becomes bad or when like there is scrutiny by any um, regulatory agency, then is the time to understand like who your friends really are or yeah. who are basically going to support you, right? Which we clearly observed there was a lack and which is actually a bad um, look for the entire ecosystem. But uh, that's why like I keep on saying more transparency, decentralized finance, less of centralized services that we can use, the better. All right. We spoke really well about uh, the entire ecosystem. You spoke about the DeFi, Metaverse, where this opportunity is going to come. But uh, since you mentioned that you, you, you had actually used the technology of Ethereum, and uh, Ethereum 2.0 is, is very near. It's like almost a month from, from the date uh, which we are actually talking. And what is your opinion about the 2.0 and the impact on the overall ecosystem, if you can just brief us that? What is interesting in um, Web3 is most of the information is available for everyone to view. Like there's nothing like I would know or you would know that the like the uh, uh, end user or somebody just following this space that won't know, right? So as we see, the Ethereum Foundation has been working really hard. I have been... Uh, closely of course following ethereum since the day one i got into uh, this ecosystem i was also part of consensus before that is the main studio behind like building a lot of ethereum products as well right so uh, the development is of course like has been going on there have been some delays and we are yet to see like when would be the right or when will be the they be comfortable to uh, do the merge or when the technology would be right there available it's yet to be seen the markets behave or they have already like uh, priced taken in. priced in they have yeah, taken that into consideration already how that is happening and we have seen the growth in the last if there's a major announcement or if there's any like hint or rumor towards a particular thing happening the market behaves so I think the market itself is a good indicator of how things will be evolved so ultimately uh, ultimately is you know this is something which we are uh, trying to understand about you know how how broad the initiative is and uh, uh, one last question before we let you go uh, is what is the importance and relevance uh, of of education as far as the blockchain technology is concerned uh, what is the relevance in context with the indian indian users consumers or for that matter who are watching our channel in india i think education can be considered from two different angles there's an education for actually building the products like the development kind of education and why I'm saying in India because there are a lot of uh, builders in India who are continuously building developing products on this blockchain technology I think that's one area of education then the other area of education is the people who want to contribute or who want to like engage with these new products or new financial applications that are coming up that is equally important of course like building is important for the economy of the country how the youth uh, is learning new and new technologies even the other side how the users are interacting it's kind of complex because again we are in very early uh, days of the technology the user experience is not as par compared to some of the financial products we might have used in the past so continuously educating um, the user base the community the developers everyone you can come across who is willing to uh, lend a ear and understand how they can interact more there's a lot lots of things to do for them in the ecosystem all right thank you so much for talking to 3.0 tv it was wonderful having you and we wish you all the best for your future endeavors and projects going forward thank you so much thank you.